In this video, I'm going to show you five very useful, very easy to learn things you can do with AutoCAD macro. And I'll leave an example of each macro that I demonstrate in the video's description below. I'm a pretty decent auto list programmer, but I still find myself using macro quite a bit. For those just getting into AutoCAD customization, you can learn how to write a macro way faster than learning a programming language such, such as AutoLisp, or any other programming language for that matter. And maybe most importantly, macro works in AutoCAD Lite. As you might know, AutoCAD Lite doesn't support custom programming languages. This includes AutoLisp. AutoCAD Lite users stand to benefit the most from learning how to create their own macros. As promised, I'll leave an example of each macro that, that I demonstrate in the description below. You can create macros for annotations. You can create macros for text, leaders, and dimensions. The macros can change the active layer and the style before entering the command. For example, my small text macro will change my active layer to my annotation layer, and then it will switch the text style to small before activating the multi-line text command. Macro for leaders and dimensions works in similar ways. You can insert blocks quickly and on the right layer. This macro first changes the layer for you, then it inserts your block. Your block definition either has to be saved in your active drawing or be in one of your search path folders for this macros to work. I can adjust the macro if, say, I want the block to always be inserted at zero degrees, or if I want the user to be able to choose a rotation angle. Note that the same macro won't work for both annotative and non-annotative blocks. You'll need a slightly different macro for each of those. Same goes for non-annotative blocks that are either set to be scaled uniformly and ones that aren't. You can create hatch commands with all your commonly used hatch variables. AutoCAD utilizes a vast array of hatch variables. This gives us a lot of variety, but it also means that it can be quite cumbersome to change all of these variables every time we use a different hatch style. These variables include the hatch pattern style, the hatch background color, and the hatch's scale, plus many other variables. I can create a macro so that will set all of those variables for us. This will save us a huge amount of time as you can see. I can draw my concrete hatch, which includes a background color, and then right after, just by clicking one ribbon button. I can draw a simple diagonal hatch pattern. I don't have to adjust all my hatch variables every time I want to draw a different style of hatch. You can quickly change the properties of an object. You can make a macro that incorporates the change properties command. For this example, I've made a macro that converts my object's line type to hidden and adds some transparency to that object. Using a macro like this, you can override many different properties, including the object's layer and its color. You can run a command with all the options preset. I commonly use the fillet command with a radius of zero, and quite often I use the chamfer command with each distance set to one inch. It's a slight pain to always have to change these settings. I can make a custom macro to input these options for me instead of having to type them every time. I can give myself quick access to these macros by either setting a ribbon button or making a custom keyboard shortcut. What I've shown in this video is really only scratching the surface in regards to what you can do with macros. There's quite a bit of potential to go even further. Using tips like this, along with other tips on my channel can really help with productivity. If you found this video helpful, then definitely check out some of the other videos on my channel. Thanks very much for watching.